ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا وقرة اعيننا من بعثه الله رحمه للعالمين هاديا ومبشرا ونذيرا بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة أما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد dear muslims we are amazed and distressed by the global nature of the COVID-19 crisis. Never in our lives have we seen a disaster of this magnitude. In the past, the world experienced Ebola, avian flu, and SARS, but they were all confined to a particular region of the world. However, this crisis is truly global. The latest data shows that more than 2 million people are infected in the United States alone and there are more than 100 deaths in the United States alone. SubhanAllah, this number, uh, when we take the whole world into consideration, reaches millions of infections and several hundred thousand deaths. This is truly very, very devastating for the entire world and it should trigger a lot of thinking and soul searching and reflection in us. It used to be that during some of the past ep epidemics, people would simply leave an affected area to a place of safety. Today, there is hardly any place where we can go to escape this virus and feel safe. As if Allah has constricted the earth despite its vastness. However, as believers, as believers in Allah, we know that nothing happens in the world without reason, without purpose, and without justice. Our faith has provided us with the necessary knowledge to understand all situations, good or bad. So how can we understand the current lockdown? First and foremost, it shows Allah's power, His Qudra, His Taqa, His Almightiness. <clears throat> Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Aziz, Al-Qahar, Al-Qadir? He is irresistible. There is no one who can stop him from doing what he wills. And he simply thinks to himself and it happens. The fact that a microscopic bug that we cannot even see with our naked eye has brought the entire world to its knees shows Allah's power, doesn't it? It shows that no one can challenge him or prevent him from executing his plans. Allah says in the Quran, <coughs> Excuse me. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And He has power over all things. This pandemic, this COVID-19 crisis could be a warning that we need to pay, our, pay attention to our deeds, our actions, our lifestyle, our choices. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي أملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Corruption has appeared throughout the land and the sea because of what humankind has done. So this is not something that Allah has sent us without having a causal effect from something. So our actions are the one that has prompted this kind of crisis. And Allah is clearly saying that the corruption in the earth happens because of what we do, not what Allah does. 
And then Allah says that this comes because you can taste the fruits, if you will, of what your hands have done. So this is a result of our own doing because Allah does not do injustice without with his creation. Allah says, وَمَا اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ ظُلْمًا لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah does not, you know, ever treat his creation with injustice. This pandemic and lockdown will likely force us to examine our sinful deeds. And if it does not, then I don't know what, what will. This pandemic could also be a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which I am paraphrasing, says that when immorality appears among a people to such an extent that it is done Im openly, the immorality appears and it spreads and it is done openly, and then Allah sends down plague and, and diseases, plagues and diseases that were not known to them before. This is a hadith from Sunan Ibn Imajah, hadith number 4019. So Allah's punishment can be of different types and we need to take a moment to explain and understand this so that people don't misunderstand. The punishment can be a specific punishment to just certain kind of people, like the people of Hud and Lut and Nuh, they were destroyed because they rejected the prophets of Allah and Azab came and they were destroyed. And the punishment can also be general where everybody is included. However, even in that case, the consequences of that punishment can be different uh, f for different people. So, for example, this pandemic could be a punishment for some people and this plague or pandemic could be a means of elevating their status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dying in a plague is not necessarily uh, a reflection on the person's a character or that he is being punished or Allah, Allah's wrath descended upon him because some of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu died in the plague. Most famous among them is Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu an, who was the commander of the Muslim army during the Khilafah of Umar radiallahu an, and he was fighting on a campaign in Al-Balqa in Palestine and the plague came and he and many other Sahaba died as a result of the plague. The Prophet ﷺ said that the one who dies in the plague is a shaheed. So subhanAllah, dying in the plague as a result of the plague uh, can attain somebody martyrdom. Of course, this martyrdom is not of the same level as martyrdom that comes as a result of fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This pandemic could also be a way for Allah to help us to return to him. The COVID-19 has reminded us that not even the so-called superpowers of the world have any power to deal with a tiny creation of Allah. This virus is a really tiny, tiny creation. The Quran tells human beings that there is no ref refuge. There is no refuge from Allah except in him. لا ملجاء من الله إلا إليه SubhanAllah, this is so profound. In the worldly context, if somebody is harassing us, bothering us, or trying to oppress, her, oppress us, then we go to somebody who is higher, his boss or a leader, to save us from that person's oppression. But when Allah's wrath descends upon someone, nobody can help except Allah himself. So in order to seek refuge from the wrath of Allah, we have to go to Allah. So this is what the ayah means, لا ملجاء من الله إلا إليه. No one can help us, no government, no powerful leader, no multi-billionaire except Allah. A hadith tells us that on the day of judgment, Allah will say, and he will declare, and he will look at the all his creation that are standing before him uh, in awe and he will say Anal Malik I am the king meaning the king of the kings Ahkam al Hakimin Ain al Muluk al Ard where are the kings of the world? SubhanAllah 
this pandemic has reminded us in this dunya that that of course will happen in the on the day of judgment but in this dunya the pandemic has reminded us that every day of our existence allah is the king nothing in this dunya happens without his permission and his knowledge and he holds power he alone holds power he alone is the creator of everything subhanallah think about this whatever exists today tall skyscrapers bridges roads whatever else you can think of that human beings have created have they really created those things no they haven't they have simply changed the shapes of things that allah had already created for us so we are not father that allah is that he creates things out of nothing we simply change things and so the real power real power of creation and decision about life and death belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should reconnect with Allah and seek his forgiveness because only he can forgive and only he can remove the calamity we are suffering from. This pandemic has also reminded us to show gratitude. Subhanallah, it is through gratitude, shukr, that we truly experience the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Wala in shakartum la azidarnakum. If you are grateful, I will keep giving you more and more. SubhanAllah, so that's the secret. If you want more from Allah, more bounties from Allah, you have to think and thank Him profusely. And no matter how much we thank Him, we will never be able to fulfill the rights of Allah uh, through our thanks because we don't even know how many things Allah has given us. We only knew, uh, know a few things that are apparent to us, but many other things that are working in the background to make our existence possible uh, we don't see that and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you will not be able to give thanks to me the way thanks is deserved when this ayah was revealed in the surah rather surah rahman uh, and the ayah that is repeated in surah, uh, surah rahman is fa bi rabbikuma tukadhiban when the prophet sallallahu recited this surah and he looked at the Sahaba and he, he said, Oh, my companions, why do I see that the jinns are uh, getting ahead of you in saying, responding to the surah? So when the words, For bi alai were recited, the jinns were saying, which the Prophet ﷺ could hear, that, No, Allah, we do not deny any of your favors. So the ayah says, Which of my favors will the two of you, meaning the ins and the jinn will deny and the jinns jumped and said oh Allah we do not deny any of your favors think about this brothers and sisters the oxygen that we breathe if the oxygen that we breathe came with a huge price tag what will we do Allah has provided limitless limitless supply of oxygen that we need from the time we are born until we die and it is provided for free what if our planet had been a thousand miles closer to the Sun or a thousand miles further away no life would have no life would have survived on this planet so Allah kept this planet at a safe distance in this solar system in in this unique setup in the universe that Allah has created for us what if there was no ozone layer to protect us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun? SubhanAllah, this rays, uh, this, this covering, the ozone layer protects us. Otherwise, people will have cancer and, you know, plants will not be able to tolerate the heat of the sun. Think for a moment also some of the more mundane things. And it is only through... Uh, reflection uh, we can realize that how much we are in need of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day and how much we take things for granted and only when those things are taken away from us do we realize it, their worth and do we begin to appreciate truly think about this how much we miss traveling and how much we miss hugging our parents our children our grandchildren we see them but because of the fear of 
either catching or transferring the virus, we do not hug them and we just, you know, stay at a distance. How much we miss inviting our friends over. We, many of us, we are, we are all social beings and we like to hang out with people we love, our family and friends, and we cannot do that uh, at, at this moment. And the greatest of all, how much we miss praying at the masjid. SubhanAllah, the hadith says that one of the people who will be on in the shade, under the shade of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, will be the person whose heart is attached to the masjid. SubhanAllah, how much we love to go to the masjid and pray there and listen to the beautiful qiraat and durus and you know, socialize with our brothers. Without a second thought, we would shake hands with them and sometimes hug them. None of that. MashaAllah, the masajid are slowly opening, but still, you know, people are keeping a distance. And how much, really, if you think about this, how much our heart grieves for the loss of the day when we used to come to the masjid put our heads down on the carpet of the prayer hall and not worry about catching any virus. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salama ala ashraful anbiya wal mursaleen wa khatam al nabiyeen inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al nabi ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallita ala ibrahim وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. Brothers and sisters, as you know, our masajid are trying their best to provide service to the community through alternative means, and it is our duty to support our masajid so that they can continue to provide these services and continue to uh, prepare for the day when they are fully staffed and when the Muslims return uh, to the masjid when things uh, normalize and things go back to uh, a normal practices. Uh, Saksi Musalla, uh, as you know, uh, had a fundraiser in Ramadan and many of you gave online. And I would ask you and I would remind you that if you made a pledge uh, in during the Ramadan fundraising and have not fulfilled the pledge, please do so now because the Masjid administration wants to uh, start the building uh, as soon as possible. And doing so depends on your fulfillment of the pledge and also your generosity. May Allah reward you and your family with the best in dunya and akhirah. The Saksi Musalla is currently open for Fajr, which begins at 5.30 and Isha prayers which begins at 10 p.m. Please support Saksid Masjid in its construction as soon as possible. Oh Allah, remove this pandemic from us. Oh Allah, make us among the grateful. Oh Allah, forgive us our forget un ungratefulness. Oh Allah, turn, uh, oh Allah, return your blessings to us and increase us in your blessings. Oh Allah, have mercy on us and humanity. Oh Allah, cure our sick. O oh Allah, those among us who have died from this plague, raise them on the day of judgment as martyrs. O oh Allah, grant plentiful risk to those who have lost jobs because of this pandemic. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. ربنا إنك جامع الناس لا ريب فيه ربنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم